Hello students, in this video we'll define the Gaussian curvature and mean curvature of a surface. If we're given a surface with first and second fundamental forms, first and second fundamental forms, one and two, respectively, the principal curvatures kappa 1 and kappa 2 are the roots of the equation determinant of 2 minus lambda 1 equals 0. Okay, those are the principal curvatures. Okay, we've seen a ton of examples of computing these principal curvatures. And so now what I want to do is I'm going to define two things. So we define We find two quantities. We defined capital K, which is the product of the principal curvatures. And this is the Gaussian curvature of the surface. That's the Gaussian curvature. And we're going to write Gaussian curvature to what we've seen tensorially for higher dimensional things too. This is the Gaussian curvature. And to find, uh, how do you want to write this? Usually H, which is the average of these things, the arithmetic average over two. And that is the mean curvature Mean curvature is also really important. Okay. And so what I want to do is I want to find, so for example, we know that for a sphere, so examples of these things, so we previously saw for a sphere, we saw that kappa 1 equals kappa 2 equals 1, and so that implies that the Gaussian curvature of a sphere is equal to 1, and it implies the mean curvature of a sphere is also equal to 1. So for a sphere, the Gaussian mean curvatures are the same. If we have a cylinder, We have kappa 1 is equal to 1, and kappa 0, kappa, <laughs> kappa 0, no, kappa 2 is equal to 0. Kappa 2 is equal to 0, and that implies that k, the Gaussian curvature, is 0, okay? But the mean curvature is equal to 1 half, interestingly enough, okay? Because the cylinder has some curvature to it, right? You might not say the curvature is completely flat because the, curv because the cylinder bends around that one of the axes that's parallel to the ruling, or perpendicular to the rulings, right? And so that gives you sort of an average value of the curvature. So in one direction, it's curving like a circle of a curve, but in the other direction, it's curving like a straight line, which is no curvature. So it's giving you an average value of the curvatures, okay? All right, excellent. So those are two examples of computing um, Gaussian curvature and mean curvature. Of course, for a plane, we found that they were both equal to zero. And we want to find out some interesting cases of these things, all right? So let's uh, figure out formulas for these things in terms of the first and second fundamental forms, right? So recall that... 1 is this symmetric form over here. It's going to be E, F, F, G, and 2 is L, M, M, N. So let's do a little bit of algebra. So our solutions over here, if I set determinant, I have 2 minus lambda 1, right? So I have L minus lambda E. Then um, it's 2 minus lambda times I, right? So then I'm going to have a F, uh, whoops, excuse me, an M minus lambda f, then another, an, uh, let's say an m, an m minus lambda f again, symmetric, and then a uh, n minus lambda g. Well, zero. If I can solve this equation, I can find what the principal curvatures are, right? So let's foil it out. So I'm going to have an l minus lambda e times what? Times n minus lambda g, and then minus m minus lambda f quantity squared is equal to zero. Good, let's foil this out over here. This is going to be an L, n, and then the lambda coefficient is going to be, I'm going to have a minus lambda, and then e over here, e n plus, um, plus g l, like that. And then plus lambda squared, lambda squared term. The lambda squared term is going to be a e g, e g. Beautiful. Let's foil things out over here. If I do foiling out over here, I'm going to have an m squared, then minus 2 lambda m fm, plus a lambda squared f squared, like so. Okay, equals 0. All right. So our coefficient of lambda squared is going to be lambda squared 
and then we're gonna have an eg minus f squared. What's my lambda coefficient gonna be? So let's do this carefully. So we're gonna have a, um, let's do a plus lambda. Actually, we really need a minus actually. Um, let's do minus lambda. Okay, so minus lambda. What's the coefficient of lambda? Well, we'll have a en plus gl, like that. There's one minus lambda. Now this over here is gonna be a what? A minus minus turns into a plus, right? So that's gonna be a, a minus 2fm. Make it a plus. Like that. Good. Because this really turns into a plus, right? So this is really a plus 2 lambda fm, so I need a minus minus to counterbalance it. It's an L. And the constant coefficient is what? The constant coefficient is going to be an ln minus m squared is equal to zero. Okay? And now I need to go back to my uh, algebra days. My algebra days taught me the following. They taught me that if I have a quadratic expression that looked like ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, right? I divide by a to complete the square. That could mean one perspective, but it can also mean that this, if I write the solutions R1 and R2 like this, R1 and R2, that's the same thing as saying it's x squared minus R1 plus R2x plus R1, R2 equals zero. That's a symmetric expression. So in other words, what we're saying over here is we're saying that the product of the roots of these things, of course, the roots of this expression are K1 and K2, right? And so what can I say? I can say that the if I look at this expression over here, that's my C over A. C over A has to be R1, R2, or K1, K2. So my Gaussian curvature K is equal to what? Is equal to ln minus M squared over, over what? That's the determinant of the second fundamental form over EG minus F squared. And now let me make an important remark about this. And this is actually very, very important. So that both these things, that's an F squared. Of course, not f times two, but f squared, f squared. This expression is invariant under coordinate changes. We proved that in previous video. That is very important, right? In other words, the denominator and the numerator transform in exactly the same way, so you get a cancellation, okay? Assuming it's orientation preserving, so again, I always have this negative sign issue, just, which is constantly plaguing me, okay? Now what's h gonna be? h, the scalar curvature, uh, the not scalar curvature, but the mean curvature, is gonna be what? Is going to be the, it's r1 plus r2, if there's a negative sign, it's this expression over here over a, right? So our scalar curv or, um, curvature expression is gonna be what? So now I have a over two, so K1 plus K2, I need to do two in the denominator. K1 plus K2 is equal to this expression over here divided by this, right? So it's gonna be En, En minus, uh, plus, well, let's just put that in the middle for symmetry's sake, minus two FM and then plus GL relative to twice EG minus F squared. And again, we haven't proven that this quantity performs in the same way, but it's an elementary exercise to see that it's a quadratic form, basically. It's a perfectly symmetric quadratic form, so this is also invariant under coordinate change. Invariant under coordinate change. So we have these beautiful expressions for the mean curvature and the Gaussian curvature, and we're going to see in further videos characterizations of when you have zero mean curvature and zero Gaussian curvature, when you have characterizations of when you have a constant Gaussian curvature or a constant mean curvature. We're going to address those questions and figure out how these curvatures change under conformal, uh, conformal changes of variables. And so we'll see that these uh, quantities give us natural extensions to the field of partial differential equations, which is, of course, my field of study. And so that's why I'm particularly interested in these sorts of problems, because in particular, every sort of problem that says, under, if you do a, co a conformal change of coordinates, how does the curvature change? Well, that basically says the, cur the curvature changes the way you wish it if the conformal factor satisfies a partial differential equation, right? And so if I can understand the partial differential equation, I can understand how the geometry changes under conformal changes of variables and even under isometric changes of variables. Think questions of those nature, basically. So in other words, we're very interested in figuring out how if you sort of deform shapes, how the cur how different curvatures, how the Gaussian curvature changes, how the mean curvature changes, how if you do like complex geometry, if you want to read some of my papers, you can talk about how like the churn 
curvature relates to the uh, Ricci scalar curvature, Chern scalar curvature, Ray Raymond scalar curvature. These things all are related, and it's very important to understand the connections between these curvatures as the surface is being deformed over time in particular or over just a regular sort of a, just a straight diffeomorphism. Thank you very much.